coming out. All right, is everybody ready? All right. Um, honestly, I was already going to step to the podium today um, with, with quite a, a heavy heart, considering what happened this past weekend. Um, you all know I'm a veteran, so I was uh, a lot of Americans celebrate Veterans uh, Memorial Day. I was personally mourning uh, during Memorial Day and thinking about some of the friends, those brave men and women that uh, I've lost in the past that have given the ultimate sacrifice for our way of life. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, about 1 o'clock in the morning, I received a call where a 10-month-old had been shot in our community. Uh, so I was going to step up to the podium today with that on my heart. But as we all know, over the last couple of hours, there have been some developments. So the bulk of this press conference, we will talk about not only crime in our community, but law enforcement. Uh, to just go back a little bit, uh, I have to go back to February. Uh, and in February, there was a outbreak that not just affected our community and our state, but the entire globe. Uh, that outbreak has changed our lives, has changed our livelihoods. Uh, to, to, to date, we have over 190 of our neighbors that we have lost due to that outbreak. I personally lost friends. I've lost a mentor. And those families are still reeling to this day. As far as the way our livelihoods have changed, we know that just across the river, uh, Diamond Jacks has closed for good. Our area lost hundreds of jobs. We know in Treeport, there has been a forced reduction of a lot of our big employers. Bentler Steel is one of them. My brother works at Bentler Steel. And our livelihoods are changing. People are not only hurting from their family members and friends, who we've lost or been sick during this public health crisis, but they're also anxious and their pocketbooks are hurting. They're trying to figure out how they're going to make ends meet. Even if they haven't been terminated, a lot of our citizens have had their hours reduced. And the reason why I start off with that preamble is to tell the community that we already were hurting prior to the events of this weekend. The last thing that we need is an unnecessarily violent or bloody summer. Now on to the 10 month old that was shot this weekend. I spoke to both parents, spoke to Mr. Williams and I spoke to Ms. DeBose. Uh, and honestly, they encouraged me. They're happy that their baby boy is having a quick and full recovery. Uh, and it was good to talk to him, but I gotta say it's bad because I've had far too many of those conversations. Uh, the first year of my mayoralship, I attribute the 45-year low in crime to one thing. Well, a couple things, but one of those things is the hard work of our police officers. The other thing is community-oriented policing. That is our citizens working alongside our police officers. That's the grandmothers that are on the porch talking to the officers that are rolling by and getting to know them. That's the kids playing in the street, having a relationship with those officers that patrol their neighborhood. That's the reason why our community was so safe in year one. Now, the events that unfolded over the last couple of hours. An individual made some comments that our community is very much up in arms about. They're insensitive. And in the words of my friend and the fellow mayor from Minneapolis, Jacob Fry, the actions of those officers in Minneapolis were completely unacceptable. Police officers' duty is to serve and protect. Not only was the duty absent in their actions, but also an element of humanity was lacking. To hear somebody cry out for help and say they can't breathe and keep the knee on the back of someone's neck for over five minutes it's painful to watch. And honestly, at this point, I can't even watch these videos because we see them too often. I want to say that not only does the comments of individuals that in no way, shape, or form represent the sentiments of the Shreveport Police Department or my administration drive a wedge between what we need to accomplish as a community but the actions around the country also is driving that wedge. 
if we're going to be successful going forward, if we're going to avoid a violent summer and remainder of the year, we have to work together. So I want to reassure the people of Shreveport that myself and Chief Raymond, who will come up in a moment, we are committed to serving and protecting our citizens. I know I might have been ambiguous about some of the, the elements that played out over the last couple hours, but understand there is currently an investigation, and I'm not going to say anything to jeopardize that. A part of our Constitution includes due process, so we absolutely need to let that play out. And I'll say for those people that are furious in this moment, to be patient and to watch that process. It's been multiple times since I've been mayor where there was an incident that's similar to this where there's a lot of eyes at the forefront of this at the beginning, but then by the time justice is served and we talk about the end state, nobody is around. So I need you all as the community to stay committed to this just as we are. One thing that I want to announce today I'm announcing the 22 members that compromise the Shreveport Commission on Race and Cultural Diversity. This committee will begin their work in June, which will include making recommendations on how to build trust between law enforcement and the communities of color. However, the Race Commission's work will not be limited to public safety. They will also evaluate the disparities in health outcomes exposed by COVID-19 and will explore other initiatives that can improve race relations in Shreveport. I know that things are not perfect, we have a lot of work ahead of us, and I'm committed to that work, but this is going to take a team effort. And speaking of a team effort, I'm happy to be flanked by our public safety chairman, Councilman Grayson Butcher, and also I've uh, spoke to Councilman John Nicholson, who both have endorsed us having body cameras for all of our police officers, us finding that funding and making sure that all of our police officers have body cameras. Chief Raymond will come up in a minute, and he'll also be able to address other policies that are rolling out. I'm also happy to be here with Councilwoman Fuller, who is the chairman, vice chairman of the city council, and Councilwoman Tabitha Taylor as well. All of us are committed to making sure that Shreveport is the safest place it can possibly be. At this time, I'll introduce, I'll bring up Chief Raymond. Chief. Thank you, Mayor. I as well have a few comments I would like to make regarding some of the occurrences we, we faced within the last 24 hours or so at this point. I want to start off by commenting on the incident in Minnesota which resulted in the death of George Floyd and to clarify the position of the Shreveport Police Department. I was an instructor at our police academy and I taught use of force and defensive tactics as part of my daily duties during that time. I've never been taught nor do I believe that placing the knee on the back of somebody's neck for an extended period of time is an acceptable or justifiable use of force except an instance of deadly force. The video segment that I watched was disturbing to say the least. Furthermore, I am aware of a Facebook post issued by one of our members expressing his opinion of the, the video uh, that depicted several minutes of the altercation that ultimately resulted in the death of Mr. Floyd. When I was sent a copy of the post yesterday evening, I immediately reached out to the officer and had him redact the post, which he was done. This morning, the officer was placed on departmental leave pending an investigation. As per policy, and to ensure that the officer under investigation is granted the opportunity of due process, I will not comment further at this time as to the incidents in Minnesota nor to our internal investigation. As I have proven over the last 18 months, I insist on leading an agency with integrity and putting the needs of citizens above all others. If a violation of our po policies, and more importantly, a violation of the public trust occurs, then I will deal with it appropriately, as I've always done. No doubt, tensions are high, both nationally and locally, as a result of years of distrust of policing methods and practices. Oftentimes, as is the case today, incidents occur to further erode that trust, and even if the incident was hundreds or even thousands of miles away, damage is done to the entire law enforcement profession, and we in Shreveport are not immune. We simply cannot move forward if we continue to tiptoe around one another and not have an action plan. We have worked hard to improve relationships between the Shreveport Police Department and the citizens of Shreveport, but many of the issues we face today are historical in nature and have, had, have existed for over 100 years. We cannot erase history 
and we certainly cannot heal all wounds in the last 18 months. To date, we have implemented pertinent training for our officers to include cultural diversity, de-escalation techniques, and dealing with mental illness. Our officers are encouraged to engage, engage in non-enforcement citizen contacts on a daily basis, the goal being to get to know one another in building relationships outside of an enforcement contact. We have reviewed, amended, and added dozens of policies so that our officers know what is expected of them and so that we can hold officers accountable when those expectations are not met. I would like to announce that we are looking for an opportunity to commission a study fo focused on determining any racial biases within the department and suggesting any policy changes to address those issues. Furthermore, I continue to support the purchase of body cameras for all of our uniformed police officers, along with policies directing their use while on duty, and I hope to work with council to identify funding for that need. Perhaps most importantly, we intend to host town hall meetings and provide an opportunity for citizens and police officers to discuss national and local events that are a cause for concern and necessitate an open investigation with regard to investigative practices, policies, and procedures. The root of many of our problems may be misunderstanding and a lack of meaningful conversation. We will do our part and I ask that all of you take a step forward and join us by doing yours. Thank you, ma'am. Is there any questions while Chief is here? I don't know if you have a question for Chief or a council member or myself. So you Yes, sir, certainly. I have not reviewed his uh, his internal investigative file at this at this point, so I cannot I cannot accurately answer that question. What is the approximate cost uh, for body cameras for all the officers? The, the the plan we're looking at is to purchase 400 body cameras, which will cover every officer that works in the uniform capacity. It wouldn't include those that sit at a desk and do investigations and may work undercover. Um, it's a five-year plan. And we also need to get tasers. So, so we have two quotes. One includes body cameras and tasers, and it's about 865,000 the first year, about 600,000 thereafter for the next four years for a total investment of about 2.9 million. If you just wanted to purchase the cameras, it's about 2.1 million total five-year investment. And no other. Well, so, at a time when we're having budget challenges, we also need to find funding to further. Certainly, and we've we've listed you know body cameras have been an unfunded need for for years now on the on the budget. It's been a need we've 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 tried to address previously. So, do you plan to um, explore all funding sources? Is, is there funding perhaps at the federal level? Yes, we have a grants coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, she she looks for those opportunities. In in previous years, three four years ago. The only opportunities available required match funding, and the city was not in a position at that point, is my understanding, to meet the match funding. So if you needed $3 million, the city would have to come up with $1.5 million. Um, currently, there have not been any opportunities available to us even for match funding, but we're certainly looking for any opportunity um, to kind of get our foot in the door. We, we do have 90 body cameras at this time, uh, but 90 body cameras doesn't go very far when you have over 500 police officers. Speaking about what Well, I, th I think certainly the effects of COVID-19 have had, said, had just had some negative effect on our policing abilities. And what I mean by that specifically is we have not been able to put um, some people in jail that otherwise we would have arrested. Even if it's for a minor offense or one that you might consider nonviolent, um, I think certainly the, the more individuals that are, that are walking the streets that, that should have at least been booked into jail and gone through that process that they have not, that's going to contribute to higher crime. Uh, even if we're just responding to misdemeanor type crimes, that takes away from a police officer's ability to be proactive and prevent more violent crimes. Uh, secondly, I think you can look at the fact that we're asking citizens to stay at home, stay in your house. So you can anticipate that there will be an increase in some domestic violence or uh, household violence, and, and we have seen some of that.
we're certainly going to allow due process to take its place, but, but you know, um, I think we'll, we'll take into consideration the training that he does have and the, the experience and knowledge that we expect him to, to carry with him. Disciplinary measures could range anything from a letter of reprimand to suspension up to including termination. But it would be, um, I, I can't comment at this point, this was the first day the investigation started. Typically the investigations take between 45 and 60 days. And so I'm, 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 I'm not going to judge until I actually have the folder before me. Ultimately I make the decision as to whether it's a uh, classified or excuse me, a sustained complaint or not. And then ultimately myself, the deputy chief, make a decision as to punishment. Yes, sir. That's what the investigation is going to going to show us. We do have a social media policy, but again, um, I, I can't be presumptive and tell you whether he was in violation or not without giving that officer the due process rights of that investigation. I can't tell you that's been done at this point. That will be part of the investigative process. But I, I can't I can't say that someone's looked at the file at this moment. And, and also, uh, Chief, I'll, I'll quick, uh, also I I don't want to put the, the council members on uh, the spot because I you know asked them to come here uh, today. I've had conversations with them on uh, getting their support as we move forward. But if they do want, if they would like to say something, again we have the public safety committee chair, we have the vice chair of the council. Uh, Councilman Bowman is doubling up as media and council member today. Uh, but if they would like to say something, uh, I would like to give them the opportunity to say something as well. Um, I'll just say that our role as the city council is to be checks and balances as legislators, and we are not the right, we need to work in with, we need to cooperate as completely and as sincerely as we can with the administration so that we can reach proper conclusions. Additionally, I want to welcome comment from the public. I've been contacted by a number of citizens. I expect to hear from more, but this is an opportunity for us to unify behind a common goal of our public safety, health, and welfare. I welcome any of you in groups or as individuals to reach out to us with your concerns and with your possible solutions. This isn't a time for finger pointing, it's a time for us to come together to heal and to find solutions to issues before they become bigger issues. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, I too echo the sentiments of Councilwoman Fuller, but I wanted just to reiterate to the public, because I know that there are a plethora of emotions. I feel them myself that I share with the chief as long well with the mayor. And I think that we are implementing policies that will go in and make sure that we work together to build community. We cannot build community with what we've seen in the last 24 hours with this, with this level of distrust that is felt among so many of our citizens. So we will work actively, let the process pan out the way that it's supposed to. I'm sure that all of the citizens will be paying attention just as we are as council people. In order for us to build a strong community, it takes all of us working together. And we want to ensure that public safety is not compromised at any expense. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to reiterate what my colleague said. Um, I think that due process, uh, I, I am glad to hear that we have an investigation going forward. Uh, there are civil service rules and regulations that have to be followed, and uh, I think we all should should honor that and uh, know that the Shreveport Police Department is going to do the best job that they can to make sure that, uh, that they are uh, uh, investigating this properly. Secondly, I want to say that um, I feel like that uh, whatever the police department needs and that will make the citizens and our officers safer, you have a commitment from me and I think the rest of my colleagues to make sure that we find the funding to be able to protect our citizens and our police officers. Thank you all. All right, any remaining questions?
really think it'd be a little presumptive at this point to try to talk about what his, his you know, future might look like. Um, so I'm gonna have to hold those types of questions until the conclusion of the investigation. And I'll be happy to address some of those things 60, 75 days out from now. Yes, sir. To be perfectly honest with you, unfortunately, I've, I've been trapped in my office most of the day responding to phone calls, emails, and text messages. I haven't had the opportunity today to get out and, and, and be around uh, my comrades, um, so I'm not really sure. I was, I, mean, I was on the phone till about 1, 2 o'clock this morning and then started taking phone calls about 6 a.m., and it's continued from that point. So if I haven't spoke to someone specifically, and most of the people I've spoke with have been regarding um, investigatory questions and things like that. Yeah, and I mean, j the, the, the cuts are a bit of a misnomer. Again, public safety is our number one priority. Uh, the funding that we, were, we are using from the police department uh, to bridge the gap between our, our shortfall due to this virus uh, and where we need to be was based off of uh, what was un those unfunded positions. Uh, so I've said multiple times to the community, um, we would love, if you're an able-bodied young man, young woman, if you know an able-bodied young man and young woman, please come and be a part of the solution. Uh, join the uh, police department. Uh, what, what this does say, though, in talking about finances, as you heard today from our council members, they're committed to using what funds we do have available to making sure we equip the officers that we do have. So if we aren't up to the 560 officers that's on the books, if we're down to 500, we can be down to 400. We need to make sure that they have the proper equipment so they can go out and keep this community safe. And we all are committed to that end. All right, thank you.